Every now and then, companies like to throw their hat in the ring and try to make a brand name video game. These games always have questionable quality and make you wonder why they even exist. Okay, most of these games are just blatant product placement. Now I did a bit of scrounging and I found one of the weirdest branded games that I could find. Well, other than the Kool-Aid Man for the Intellivision. No, I found a stranger one than that. Darken Sky on the GameCube. This game was actually bankrolled by Skittles! If that's not strange enough, the Skittles logo is nowhere to be found on the packaging. In fact, the only reference I can find to Skittles on the box is in this corner that no one reads. It even has Skittles in quotations, like the person writing it couldn't even believe that this was a thing. Well, let's get this over with and taste the rainbow or play the rainbow or whatever. Now the first thing you're probably wondering is how do you make a game about Skittles? Well, hear me now, believe me later, but this is actually a full-blown 3D action-adventure game. The basic concept is that an evil asshole named Necroth wanted to have all of the world's magic for himself, so he took the rainbow out of the sky, hence the title, collected all of the Skittles in the world, which Grant magical powers to whomever possessed them, and has made all bright colors illegal. I bet this is where M. Night Shyamalan got the idea for the village. This color attracts those we don't speak of, you must bury it. Holy shit, you know, I was just joking at first, but they refer to Necroth as he whose face may not be glimpsed. You mean kind of like those we don't speak of? Just look at the way that Bryce Dallas Howard looks in that movie compared to Sky. She's even got the little shepherd's crook cane and everything. Go ahead and take a minute to process that. Whoa. Gotta save that for Necroth. So our real mission is we have to collect the five prisms, and then bring them together to save the rainbow. We play as Sky, the epitome of an anti-hero. She has no experience or confidence in herself whatsoever. Her single strongest trait is her overly sarcastic sense of humor. This dude needs to process his grief. Despite her complete lack of competence, I actually like Sky as a hero. Eventually you start to collect more Skittles, which give her various magic abilities. You'll need to play the game. Early on you'll meet Drac, this little gargoyle whose main role is to give Sky someone to make smart ass comments with. This game has a very sarcastic sense of humor that I found pretty funny at times. One thing that you have to realize is that this game doesn't take itself seriously at all. There's no fourth wall. It's like they found the most disgruntled game designer that they could find and he's like, oh, you want me to make a game about Skittles? You got it, assholes. When do the paychecks come in? Characters will often talk directly to you, as in you, the player. They even make fun of the Skittles company in the game. A Skittles, mysteriously unaffected by centuries of digestive activity. You see, marketing didn't want us to show a Skittles all narfed up from stomach juices, so they decided, I'll shut up now. There's also a note log, which is basically a giant smart ass how-to manual. There's no way to skip to the top or the bottom of the note log though. The great thing about Dark and Sky is that you're allowed to completely remap the controls from the menu screen, which you'll want to do. I don't know why they defaulted the jump control to the R button, which if you've ever played the GameCube, you know that it has way too long of a trigger pull, and trust me, jumping is a crucial part of this game. I'm not sure why you can't make the talk and then jump buttons the same though. I guess I can press up to talk to people since it worked so well in Foxana do. As I already mentioned, jumping is really important. Sky's biggest weakness is that she dies instantly in water. How's your backstroke? Lousy. I'm a warrior, hero, adventurer, goddess who can't swim, okay? This is somehow even worse than in Grand Theft Auto 3, since the designers here love putting you around water all the damn time. It's like you're constantly playing the floor is lava game. Trying to jump on anything but the water. Sponges, leaves. Lily pads, even some damn flying pillows! It wouldn't be so strange, but Sky can literally walk on lava anyways! That's really the hardest part of this game, and you just have to learn to suck it up and deal with it. 
The other fatal flaw in this game is the complete lack of balance with enemies. There are no simple opponents. It seems like everyone you meet has a projectile, and they want you really bad. These guys fire off attacks so fast you can't even think. Making it worse is that you always seem to end up fighting several enemies all at the same time. Shit! It's just so easy to get overwhelmed. Look at this, I just started the level and these bastard children of Poir are shooting at me from all over the place like Tom Cruise and Taps! It's beautiful, man! It's beautiful! What makes it worse is they can shoot you from so far away I can't even see them. That means there's one strategy that I always end up using. Hide behind cover, pop out and shoot, hide again, repeat. But somehow they fucked up the targeting reticle so it adjusts for depth! I mean, really? Who does that? What the hell? How am I supposed to aim at anything if I don't know where I'm aiming? What makes this even harder is the oversensitivity of the C-Stick. If you've ever played an FPS on the GameCube like Die Hard Vendetta, you know what I'm talking about. So here you are, pinned down, outgunned, and unable to aim. Making it worse is that it takes way too many hits to kill anything. Even if you hit these guys with a debuff shot, it takes seven hits to kill a standard enemy. Fuck! Now you can't get more powerful spells like the fire or the ice magic, but even then it takes four or five shots to hit everyone that you see, and that's way too many. The best spell is affliction, which poisons enemies, but you don't get it until way too late in the game, and it doesn't work on everybody. Imagine if you were playing Super Mario Brothers and every Goomba you came across was like killing Bowser with the fire flower. Fuck! But even then it only takes five fireballs to kill Bowser, so that would still be easier. This game really likes to tilt the scales in combat. Look at these projectiles the guy's shooting at me! Look, look at them! They're doing in complete 180 degree turns to hit me! And even if they do miss, the enemy attacks don't go away! They bounce off walls and come back at you! This makes every battle feel like absolute chaos! Uh, that was a fire fight! While it is very cheap and dirty and frustrating as hell, it does give this game some added challenge, which I do like. If it wasn't for how potentially dangerous every single battle could be, I'd just fly right through this game. The one thing that balances out how risky every jump misstep or battle can be, this game lets you save whenever you want. It feels dirty, like you haven't save states on an emulator, but this game is really hard at times, so it does come in handy. When you aren't engaged in combat, you'll be solving puzzles and talking with NPCs. I really loved some of the puzzles, but I did find others to be a little bit cryptic. Since this game is a parody, it makes plenty of jokes and references to other games in the genre. It's an action-adventure game. No, it's a fishing simulator. <sighs> Wait, Hyrule? I wonder what part of the Hyrule Historia Darkened Sky is in. Nah, I'm not seeing it. Must have been stricken from the history like those CDI games. I wonder what's up with all these puzzles that they ripped straight out of the Indiana Jones movies. But in the Latin alphabet, Jehovah starts with an I. But what's next, a leap of faith? Oh, and I didn't even need the Grail Diary. And now we got a rock biter talking about his hands too? That only these hands can open. Well, they do look like good strong hands, you crazy rock bastard. I am called a watcher. Uh, Brant can't watch or he has to pay a hundred? Now there's one type of enemy that's sure to piss you off more than the blood mist zombies in Onea Chanbara. Anything that flies! These flying monsters are insane. Look at this, they're flying all over the place. They can change directions without warning and go from in the sky to on the ground instantly. Sometimes they're going so apeshit crazy, it hard crashes the game. Gah, fuck! Good thing I have to save every three minutes. This game has some pretty inconsistent sound effects even when it isn't glitching out. Ah! Shit! Like why are these bugs so damn loud? These flying platforms, fuck, she should really be wearing some PPE. This is a pretty minor complaint. Actually, I'm kind of impressed that this game functions as well as it does. For being a game about Skittles candy, it is very ambitious. The beginning and ending CGI looks really good, and I wish they had used more of these scenes. Really, this game's strongest point is its sense of humor. And this guy. How much would you pay for a tool that sharpens daggers like razors? Wait, don't answer yet. But if you also got a fire starter, a clothes washer, and a handy weapon of war? Wait, don't answer yet. How about the world's best paperweight? Guaranteed never to float in the air above papers. You get them all with rock. There's a handful of things that could have really improved this game. A map and a radar system are desperately needed, along with a way to lock onto enemies. Item inventory should be carried over rather than resetting in each area, and I don't know why it's so damn hard to climb up hills. 
It seems like everywhere you go, you just can't hop up any of the hills and places that you think that you should. Now I know why they call it the Boneyard. But look at this scorpion guy. He's just running all over the place like Seabiscuit or some shit. Get back here. While these guys are hard to chase down, sometimes the game will spawn enemies from cleared areas just to fuck with you, assholes. The game isn't always consistent with health bars either. First these guys have them, then they don't. What the fuck? For being a ridiculous premise for a game, Dark and Sky isn't all that bad. Isn't all that good either. There's a full game's worth of content here. It took me about 11 hours to beat the game, although it says 9 since I saved so many times. And it is pretty ambitious. The greatest downfall is that there's just a lot of better games that I could be playing. And I think on that note, I'm going to go find one.